Nightly news coming to you again. We're almost a daily project now, and we have the special pleasure to introduce Jessica Mazzulli, who's one of DS106 local UMW internats, and she'll be talking to us today not only about her new job as a journalist of all things, but also about how that might relate to DS106 and what is in her future. Jessica, welcome. Thank you. So, what is this we hear about you getting a new job? I didn't know that UMW graduates actually got jobs. I was surprised too, <laughs> so <laughs> especially any journalist. So, so what's, tell us a little bit about the job. Well, I started applying for jobs back in January, knowing that it could be pretty difficult to find one at a newspaper. Um, but I had only applied for about 30 jobs when I got uh, two callbacks from newspapers over spring break. And I had interviews at them, and um, I accepted one of them at the New Jersey Herald, oh. which is in Newton, New Jersey. So you're going to Dirty Jersey? Yes, where I'm, I'm from. So you're <laughs> yes. from Jersey? Yes. Whereabouts in Jersey? I'm in the northern part, which is close to where this paper is. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a lot of friends in Jersey, so uh, not that that means anything. Yeah. But let me ask you this. You were saying a little bit about the actual application process, and you had to take a test. Mm -hmm. What was on the test? Like, what kind of questions does a journalist test ask? Well, the one interview process was very intense. Um, it had a writing section where you had to go through a, a like, fake interview and in writing. Sure. Um, it had a test that involved um, spelling and grammar. Okay. Um, I would have failed that. Yes, I think I did also. <laughs> and then the other was a test on Twitter, actually. And it was questions like, how many people follow you on Twitter? How many, um, like, do you know what kind of URL shortener you would like to use on there? Um, what's the animal that's typically on the homepage of Twitter? <laughs> Really? Yes. They asked you what animal was on the homepage yes. of Twitter? Which I believe is a bird. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep. <laughs> now let me ask you, like, is there a right shortener? Or they just want to know if you know? They want to know if you know, I think, is it? Yeah. yeah. It's amazing to me that part of the test to get a journalism mm -hmm. job was focused specifically on Twitter. Yes. It's amazing. And Martha and I were talking earlier, Martha Burtis, about how integral Twitter has been to this class yes. in terms of framing that. But I can mm -hmm. imagine for journalism, too, mm -hmm. having a following, following people on Twitter would be huge. Mm -hmm. So had you had Twitter before DS-106? No. I, I was lucky in that. <laughs> I now had one. And as soon as I got home, I added more people on Twitter. So. You started going crazy. Yes. That is awesome. Yeah, but with, especially with that job, they wanted you to be out driving in a car and look for traffic daily and then on Twitter like tweet back to them what the traffic was what? and also they ask questions about if you had a smartphone and do you know how to use those types of things which I don't but they asked why don't I have a smartphone really? so <laughs> yeah. you get an iPhone or an Android as yes. soon as you go up there mm -hmm. now they wanted you to let me just ask you this do they wanted you to tweet in traffic <laughs> is that what they're saying? Because they I, guess, I guess you pull over. <laughs> exactly. Yes. But if you want to be like late breaking, you yes. have to do it like, you know, the whole texting while driving. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that blows my mind. And not only that, but you got a job in mm -hmm. journalism of all things, which mm -hmm. everyone is saying, you know, journalism's dying, it's mm -hmm. going away. Things like Twitter and blogging are killing mm -hmm. journalism. Did they say anything about that in the interview? And what's your impression of that whole thing? Um, not particularly. Actually, that, though, was the job that I, I didn't accept. I accepted another job, which they focused on. Um, so did you got two jobs. I have one. But, but you got potentially two. Yeah, I hadn't heard back yet. I told them that I couldn't accept if they offered it because wow. I had taken another. But they were um, really all about the one that I'm going to start working at. Um, do I know how to do my own video editing? Do I know how to shoot video? They also can provide you with, um, like, a... Android or an so, iPhone. So they ask you about video, mm -hmm. shooting video. Yep. Wow. And beyond this class, I didn't have a whole lot of that, yeah. um, except for some news gathering classes that went into that. Sure. So it definitely helped to yeah. <laughs> have this. So the basic thesis of our discussion, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if you've gotten to it, and I like to lay things out because I'm not a very subtle guy, is that DS-106, right, changed your life. <laughs> <laughs> right? Sure, <laughs> yes. I mean, Forever. I mean, but it's interesting. I mean, all kidding aside, I mean, this does, I, sometimes I struggle with this class, right? Because mm -hmm. this class is not read this essay, read this novel, mm -hmm. deal with this. This class is very much an applications-based class. Yep. Get into Twitter, get your own blog, get your own domain, mm -hmm. you know, frame your own identity online through these services, mm -hmm. which is exactly what it seems like this job is 
looking for. Yes. Uh, which is fascinating to me. Yes. Yeah. And um, with, with trying to go into journalism, that it, it just fits so perfectly that um, they're looking for people who now know how to do these things, and it didn't seem like a lot of that was being taught yeah. here at UMW until this class. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Now, the other thing that's interesting that you brought up as you were talking about, you know, you recently blogged mm -hmm. on your blog, right? You want to mm -hmm. give a plug for your blog right now, the address? <laughs> uh, Jessica Mass, M-A-S, uh, dot info slash blog. Check it out. It's awesome. Um, but what you really got to in your last post, which I think, well, not your last post, it was like three posts ago because you posted twice this morning. But one of the things that kind of struck me is you're talking about what do I do with this space after the class is mm -hmm. done? And, you know, you talked about this is a space that I'm obviously going to need, given my profession. Mm -hmm. And your idea, what's, you kind of changed your final project. You kind of finished one part of it, so it's yeah. like final project part two. Mm -hmm. So part two, what are you thinking about for your second part of your, of your final project? Well, I wanted to start blogging about some of the issues um, that I'm seeing in journalism. And, like, this morning I blogged about um, changing my name and my byline when I get married yeah. and what that means, especially to a writer. Um, so I want to continue doing that type of stuff, and I want to change the look of my blog and the style of it so that I can have all of my articles listed on there. In a way, it's, a, it's like my portfolio for keeping everything in one place. Yeah, and it makes so much sense to have all that stuff so people can link to it. Mm -hmm. And then you want one place that is consistent. One of the things that's always interesting to me and what I think is important about a domain but it doesn't always come across is this idea of some sort of kind of persistent presence mm -hmm. so that, you know, even if you have this job and then you move on to another, there is a URL or an address online where people mm -hmm. can find you and see the work you've done. And we all know that a URL over time, when links come in, get Google juice or mm -hmm. Google recognized. And you're that much more viable in terms of when people search, you know, Jessica Mazzulli on Google, they're going to find you, mm -hmm. which I think is huge. Yes. And uh, keeping that some kind of sense of presence or at least understanding how it works. And the portfolio, too. Um, it's something I've been pushing for, like, a lot of people have, but, like, this idea of this place as framing your digital identity mm -hmm. online. I mean, and you just came out with that. I mean, we haven't really talked about that yet in class. Mm -hmm. It was always kind of over, but you're like, that's what I need to do now. Yes. And it's almost professional. Yeah. I mean. And I'm, the exciting part of that was when you said in one of my comments that I should now look for other journalists who I can connect to. And I really like that idea of being able to get into the to the profession a little bit more. I think that's huge. I mean, and I think that's something that I always try and push in this class, but it's always hard. Mm -hmm. But the idea that now, and with this class, it, with the open class, it's never been easier because you realize other people are reading your stuff and commenting yes. on your stuff. But one of the things that's so interesting now is that you have the ability with your space to go out, read articles, um, read blog posts by other people, comment there. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, is that virtuous cycle of commenting, when mm -hmm. you comment there, they're going to come back and check out JessMazzulli.info. They're going to see who yes. you are. And that's going to change your idea of networks, mm -hmm. right? And it's interesting. One of the things that Martha and I, Martha Burtis, who looks like she's not in the studio, but she very much is, but one of the things that we've talked about, and it kind of gets to the idea of what you're going to have to do for your job, is how do you frame a network? Because mm -hmm. what they're looking for when they want to know how many people follow you on Twitter is what your network is like. Yeah. They want to know how many people kind of follow you, listen to what you say, mm -hmm. you know, in some ways who you follow, et cetera, is just as important. And we were talking about this class, DS-106, the open version of it. It could have never fly the way it didn't if we hadn't, many people in the class, hadn't developed real serious networks. Yes. Like many of the people who are helping out with this class from, you know, Al Levine to Tom Woodward to Julia Forsyth um, to Dr. Garcia to Brian Lamb and Darcy Norman, the list goes on and on. Graham Potter, Timmy Boy, you know, this stuff, Noise Professor, this stuff couldn't have happened without that idea of a network emerging. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we put years and years into blogging and into Twitter changed the nature of the class. And in many ways, that's like what you have in front of you. Yes. Which is kind of like, you're going to start blogging regularly, I bet. You're going to start tweeting regularly. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to... It's interesting that, you know, so many of the things that people like uh, askance at in the higher ed, like mm -hmm. your little video projects and your little Twitter, mm -hmm. I mean, it's framing in many ways some possibilities we hadn't imagined. Mm -hmm. you know, and years and years I had presented on Twitter and said it's the stupidest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. But in many ways it's like, yes. you know, it is, but it was always fun. Mm -hmm. But now it's almost like professionally viable. Mm -hmm. you know, it's this weird thing. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah, I mean, what's your, what's your plans in terms of that? Do you know of any bloggers? That might be another thing is make a call, post, tweet. Mm -hmm. You know, who's into journalism? Who's yeah. doing this stuff? Because my last question for you, and it's a bigger question, is, I mean, have you thought about, I mean, you've been doing journalism here at Mary Washington. You've run the paper. Yes. Um, you've done a fine job bringing the bullet up to, I think, the next level mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Have you thought about, you know, what is the future of journalism? And this field you're getting into is, yes. you know, almost as, you know, as precarious a business as it comes, mm -hmm. or a business model, or an industry, I don't know how you want to say it. Mm -hmm. what, what's your thoughts about that? Well, it's a little bit scary for me, um, because I'm going to work at a print newspaper um, that's six days a week, and it's online as well, but it certainly isn't um, the greatest website or that that they have. So. For me, it's a little bit scary about how long will this type of job last. Um, I like the writing aspect of journalism, and, and I'm not exactly sure how long, though, I can continue with just that. Yeah. So I think, though, that journalism and newspapers have been together for the last however many years, but it doesn't necessarily mean that journalism, like journalism will so, still survive without newspapers. Yeah. Um, it's something that is very important to society, being able to get information out like that. And there will still be journalists, but they might not be um, typically working at a newspaper and writing. They, it's completely different. But I love that, the way you disaggregate the idea of journalism from newspaper. Mm -hmm. Like the two don't, aren't, we've so yes. <laughs> inflated the two so that they're one, but mm -hmm. maybe that's not the case. Mm -hmm. But you that's know, very scary. It is scary. And it's <laughs> it also is. scary is that if no one's paying, yes. you know, and there's Definitely. no jobs, who's going to do the heavy hitting mm -hmm. investigative journal? Yes. You know, if everything is someone's, you know, uh, how would you say it? A marketing, you know, mm -hmm. or a research or a PR person for some corporation. And mm -hmm. what do we have? A lot of people towing the line for various interests. Yes. Which is hopefully what newspapers would get us out of. Mm -hmm. So, not that they always did, but that mm -hmm. was the dream. You have that kind of what they call it, the fifth estate. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, that voice. Mm -hmm. So, it's interesting. And I love that you're going into a field that is so precarious. Yes. Because, I mean, it really <laughs> does put you in a situation of thinking about it. No, there's someone who you might want to follow. He was a University of Richmond um, student. His name was Tom Petty. I think okay. it was, or Dan Petty. Okay. Dan Petty, he's on Twitter, and he was also a student. He graduated a year or two ago, and he now works for uh, a paper in Denver. Yes. Was he their web editor? Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> and he's an amazing guy. He mm -hmm. does amazing things, and, you know, he's in a very situ similar situation. I've seen him report through Twitter, mm -hmm. um, through the blog. He built, he's the one who built that University of Richmond student paper. Yes. So... Um, with WordPress. And so he got a very good job right out of yeah. school. Yeah. So, I mean, that's there. And mm -hmm. I think we, you know, Mike McCarthy often said this, and mm -hmm. I really think it's right. It's like, it's at the university that journalism should be reimagining where it's going. Mm -hmm. Whether that is with newspapers or not, mm -hmm. we should be providing that space. And it's so cool to see a success story like yours. Yes. It's awesome. <laughs> Thank so, you. Jessica, thank you for coming on DS-106 Thank you for having me. Pretty painless, right? Yes. Tim Doom isn't that bad a guy? No. Let everyone know, Tim Doom is not that bad a guy. Because Tim Doom's getting a bad word. Now, Jim Groomer. All right. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. And that's DS-106 TV. We've got to do the full life. And you've got to do-do-do-do-do-do. Okay. So do that. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do